There's a time we dance. Yeah, tonight, today. That was the time that we dance. I hope you dance, says what's her name. I hope you dance. Uh, I hope you get a chance to dance. No, it's to not dance. quite like that, but something like that, yeah. Make sure you dance. Something Make like that. sure you dance, fool. Brian, any luck with the dream pie? What was that? Joey's asking. Oh, oh, Joey, no, um, I have not finished. I haven't went back and looked at the dream pie. I do need to go back and look at that. So the dream pie is a is raspberry pie that will allow me to fake out to fake out my Dreamcast into thinking, styling into the internet, oh, and uh, allow you to play some online games. It is on my list. Um, unfortunately, some of the components mm-hmm. are either going to take a while to get here. Or uh, they've kind of gotten um, uh, pricey because of uh, what's, what's been going on. But I'll always let you know this: the Raspberry Pis are finally starting to come back in stock. So I think it's gonna. It'll be soon. It'll be soon. I yeah. don't think I have to wait too much longer. But yeah, yeah. The shortage is a, over. We're about to have a glut. So I yeah, yeah, enjoy yeah, yeah. Everybody, about to have a glut. We're gonna have a glut. Check this out. Speaking of gluts, um, this is for Joey. It's just something I found. Somebody mm-hmm. took a bunch of old Hulkamania uh, WWF stuff. And they uh, use some kind of voice altering stuff on them. Oh, and, and nice! Now, so this is a this is a clip. I don't have video, but it's a clip of uh, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T talking smack. <laughs> All right, so here, check it out. <laughs> the first thing on the agenda says never surrender. Never tell a man. Tell him. Second thing says even if your body says no, your spirit always will. Tell him. Tell him. They don't even you ask. That thing in the background is tell him. Tell him. Wow. That's that's Mr. T, but it's the same voiceover. So it's... I was about to say that sounds like an impression I would do. <laughs> yeah, it's so cornball. I absolutely freaking love it. That is I can't crazy. get enough of it. They do it with. Uh, I've got some. I haven't capped cra- them yet, but I've got some uh, Macho Man Savage stuff and. <laughs> Like more Hulk Hogan stuff. I just love that crap. They're hilarious. Yeah, I do love um, it. All right. Did for, I tell you about, did we, did we, did we, I was just talking in the chat room earlier. I watched a clip that I haven't seen in forever. It was Bill Maher talking to uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. And uh, Maher was like an older clip. So he was like giving them sh- wrestler shit for, you know, being fake and stuff. And yeah. it's like, and, and well, I think he was going, he was going too far with the fakeness. In other yeah. words, he was, he wasn't just saying fake is in some of this stuff is scripted or somewhat right. planned or rehearsed. No, he was saying like, it's this flat out fake. And they're like, Hey, Hey, the Piper pulled his pants down and showed him on his leg where his big old giant bruise was. It's like, oh. Hey, this is real. This yeah. is some real stuff. You know, there's, there's real physicality. Oh, there's athletes, man. These there. guys are athletes as hell. Yeah. Some, yeah. Of them, some of them got a little too much uh, juice in them. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But uh, ask Joey and his neck and his back. How, how not physical oh, wrestling yeah. is. Yeah. Good Lord. It was real. There's real physical activity. That's not magic. Oh yeah, baby. Stories are dumb, but you know whatever. That's what the I fun. Think that's the stories the fun. are hilarious. Well, that's, that's stories are great. You need that drama. You need you need a reason to to pull for somebody to win, right? You you need that reason. Yeah, it's like this guy. It's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> it's like that guy. Remember? And him? I actually prefer it because, like, uh, like in stuff like like regular sports, I guess, or whatever you want to call other kind of sports, like football, it's like, do you pull for a team? Sometimes based on the uh, personalities or behaviors of the people, and you're getting to see real personalities, like Tom Brady watching the the Patriots forever. It's mm-hmm. like it would occasionally taint what I thought of the, about the story. Yeah. Of what was going on on field by the things I knew about him as an individual. Whereas like in wrestling, you get an opportunity. You can separate that stuff. You can make a character. And it's, it's I think it's, I think it's brilliant. You had me at taint. If I'm honest, I had to taint. It yeah. taint. Yeah. If I'm honest, you had me at taint. Right. Um, hold on. Play. Can you hear that? Yes. Can we try it again? Let's play. Okay. This child is child's play. play. Okay. We'll do that. I'm just trying to make a, um, uh... There we go. Okay, so I save that. I'm trying a new feature in my soundboard, and I think it worked. Um, okay, here we go. We are going. Oh, video's already going. Hey, oh, video people, did you enjoy it? Maybe look at that. Look, yeah, we're, we're, already ahead of the, we're already ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, that video we was watching a while ago. <laughs> yep, that's the one. All yeah. right, here we go. Everybody, in three, two, one. <laughs> For your Nintendo Entertainment System, now you and the games are one. The power glove, everything 
else is child's play. Oh, wow. Ooh, I like child's play. She I should watch too. her mouth, though. Yep. He's gonna, Chucky's going to get her. Chucky will get you. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Play Retro. This is Play Retro. We talk about old video games here. I'm one of your hosts, Scott Johnson, and my zapper won't work with this flat screen. Maybe Rob can fix it for me. Hey, Rob, fix this. No? Okay. Well, back to the garage with you then. Maybe I can power glove it into submission. Yeah. Uh, I'll just play on my Amber Dick. <laughs> power glove it into submission. Yes, Amber Dick, and I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I equip my robotic operating buddy, Rob, with a light gun zapper and the power glove, and I think I may have made an error in judgment because now Rob, well, he's taking me hostage and is demanding that I assist with his stupid gyromite high score. No way, dude. I ain't no wizard. Mm -mm. Now, spin your own gyros to collect virtual dynamite, you slow-ass piece of plastic junk. I'm going outside. Peace. <laughs> yep. Wait, that's... Rob couldn't follow me, man. He's just like, he's just a piece of plastic. No, he's, sta he's stationary. Barely did anything. You know? <laughs> he looked cool, which we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how cool he looked, but he, he, he did very little else. He, there were some games. There was some stuff. But we're here today to talk about the NES peripherals of the day. Light Gun, the Zapper, uh, Rob, the Robot, although we put Bob in the title for some reason. The Power mm -hmm. Glove, uh, all these things. Power Glove. All right, so stay tuned I never tuned had any of these that. things. I can't wait to talk about it. Oh, I my gosh. Had nothing except for the Zapper. I had the Zapper. I had two things, Zapper pew, and pew, the pew, Glove. Pew. And I wish I still had the Glove because those are hard to get now. Um, yeah, I, I would love, but one. it's okay because if you even had it, what would you would you wear it? Would you be able to put on your big man, man uh, hands? On my big fat man hands, probably not. Yeah. They're these are too <laughs> these are too beefy now. Look at these hands; they're huge. They're it'd be, you know, it'd be funny. They made a small and a large. It'd be hilarious if you just ordered the small and didn't realize it, and you got it, and you're like, "What is wrong with me? Yeah, what is wrong? Why with my, my effing mitts? The frick." <laughs> Anyway, we'll get to all that in a minute. It's going to be a fun one today, talking about hardware for a change and some of the games they came with, but uh, yeah. it'll, it'll be fun. So you NES heads, uh, get get ready. In the meantime, I wanted to mention a couple of quick things. Um, usually when we do a show and it's like about a game, I'll play that game when we're talk, you know, before we talk about it, and then we'll talk about it. And yeah. sometimes I'll say, yeah, I'm going to dip back in there and uh, whatever. And maybe it helped this week because we knew we weren't doing specific games. It was going to be hardware, so maybe that helped it. But... I ended yep. up playing a lot more Super Smash TV than I thought I was gonna. Oh, so yeah. how did you how did you enjoy it? Did you? I was very tempted to finally try out the Ant Stream on my Xbox. Mm, um, did you? But I have not. I have okay. not. I have not either. So the way it works on there is you get the basic thing for on Game Pass. It just comes with it. But then you got to buy the games, right? Is that the deal? Right, 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 right. That's the yeah. So well, no, no, no. You you buy so you get the game pass for free. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, you don't get the game. <laughs> I pass know that for you free. usually usually what you do is you get a you get credits on Ant Stream. Okay. How do so you, how do you get you those? Get, you get I think they give you so many every month free, and you can then you can like use them like it's, I'm not explaining exactly right. It's been at least a year since I've used this, and maybe they've changed the model some, but oh. essentially you get so many free credits tokens whatever they want to call them and you can play so many games with that and then if you want more you have to purchase more so i'm assuming they've continued this business model onto the xbox so yeah. if you would get the basic service with the xbox game pass and maybe get more credits than you do if you just buy it on the pc i don't know i gotta check it out I gotta I gotta check check it. maybe too. somebody knows yeah, yeah. I, would, I would assume there's probably some rewards to being a game pass member uh, yeah later on like next month i'll get more whatever these credits are i don't know I right. do want to check it out, but the one thing I do wish that game supported was, and I guess I could do a, con a control config and get all nuts with it, but nuts. I wish you could d proper dual stick that game like on a Steam Deck or anything with two yeah. sticks. I, want I would that. think you would be able to on the end stream because I think you can adjust the con you can adjust the controller and the you know the Xbox of course has two analog two sticks, sticks for yeah. dual sticks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I tried to play it on. Where is it? Oh, I don't have it down here. But I'm, I tried. I tried to play it on my Steam Deck, and it didn't. There was no controller yeah. config that I could find that would let me tweak that. I could probably tell you, man. Yeah, ultimate experience, PlayStation Two, that version, that arcade collection. Yeah. That's that's the did that's that support? The best I had did that support the second stick as you're shooting as you're shooting your uh, direct yeah, yeah shooting? both your analog sticks by default oh, it was using your, see, your analog sticks. That's how you want to play this game. Because look, I yeah. understand the limitations of the time, and also. In the SNES days, you use the X, Y, and B, A buttons to fire. Mm -hmm. 
and that's fine. Fire, fire. You can, you can get by, but I need this to be proper dual stick analog, yeah, man. Yeah. And then it I'll play it all. Really I'll, then I'll never stop playing. And then I'll just play it till I'm dead. Dude, play it till you're dead. Yeah. You don't a, need to be alive. You can play it when you're dead. Such a great game. And if you're just hearing this and going, wait a minute, you guys talked about that? Oh, yeah. Last mm-hmm. week, big oh, time uh, so Smash delicious. TV discussion. All right. Get over there. Get we smashed done. it. Brian, what'd you do uh, this week with your retro life? Um, so, in, 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 so I didn't have any of the NES stuff that we were talking about this week. Uh, you know, I like to usually put hands on stuff. Uh, so, but what I did have is I had my Master System phaser gun. Um, is that what it's called? Phaser, phaser or what? What do they call it? Yeah, yeah. It's called a light phaser is what it's called with a P-H-A-S-E-R light phaser Sega. How come they didn't and get in trouble with like Star Trek for using the term phaser? I don't know. It even kind of looks like it's kind of got that style and stuff. I guess it's because it was a phaser spelt with a... I don't know. It's a good question. Mm. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. I don't think anybody cared, to be honest with you. It's like Star Trek's Gene Roddenberry's like, what else? Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I got this light phaser that came with my master system, which I bought last month at the retro game exchange. Um, and, uh, I, I tried to use it and I'm using Rambo. I'm playing Rambo three with this bad boy or trying to pull on the trigger. The screen flashes, which means that it's at least getting the, you know, the, the trigger push, but it's not detecting anything. And I did for anybody called just a Brian, you can't play it on a modern TV. I know I got a CRT. <laughs> yeah. I know how light guns work. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I tried it and it just wouldn't work. But then when I started looking, getting a little closer to look, I noticed that the little tiny screws, I, was, I took it apart just, just briefly. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that the screws were a little bit, had just a little bit of rust on them. And when I opened it up, there's some weights in a lot of these things to give them the, kind of the feel of quality. And so there's some couple of weights in here. They're metal weights. And they got like a little rust buildup too. So I'm assuming that... Uh, probably this bore has got some problems, so I'm probably going to have to get a different uh, light phaser, which disappointed me. I was super sad, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. But that's okay. They're, I understand. they're reasonable. They're re- like, uh, I think, you know, on eBay, they're like $20, $25 or something. They're much that. cheaper than the versions you can get on Amazon, which are about 50 They also don't have the orange tip, which I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that was a, that's a, a Congress-related uh, thing from the, what, 1988? And Bob Dole said, Bob, Bob Dole. Dole said, we... We'll get a compromise. We don't because people, kids were getting killed by, by, by you know, because they were wielding toy guns and yeah. they looked real. And so we decided you got to have orange tips on. That was the compromise. And so we got that on this one. Yeah. A bunch uh, of these, though, yeah. you find them on eBay. They're, they're sands of the tip, most of them. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because they, they're, they're insane. So you better put that back on there and go outside. When am I going to be outside with my, <laughs> with my lights? And yeah. I don't know or, when I would do that. I don't I'm know. trying to think of when I'd be know. outside goofing around with that thing. It had a cable right. on it, first of all. So you're dragging yeah. a cable around unless you cut it off or something. Yeah. Just well, these first dumb. released, it might've been, it was probably before 88. So that didn't really go into play until around 88. So a lot of those may be some of the earlier like guns or maybe somebody just put some tape on mine. I don't know. Yeah. You can get these Hell for, like you said, as low as 20, 25 bucks. Yeah. 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 They're not expensive. Not bad. And, uh, yeah, I got some, just a few games. Uh, the Rambo three one is the one I was most interested in. So I, I picked it up uh, It's one I played before. Uh, and so I'm going to do just that, but I do have, just didn't quite make it. It's going to be here tomorrow. I did order a Nintendo zapper off eBay you did. Uh, and okay. I ordered it from North Carolina, which is just right above me. Um, and I was hoping, I was hoping it'd be here, but it won't be here till tomorrow. So that will that work with the mini? I wonder. The... Um, I wouldn't. That's a good question. It should because the mini has the ROMs, um, and as long as you're putting it through, um, oh, maybe not. Okay, so this may be the problem. It's HDMI out only on the mini. So yeah, but the ca- to... but the control. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to scale it down to go into anytime yeah. this is the reason why modern TVs have problems is because they're upscaling right uh the signal and that creates a timing issue um downscaling. I'm not saying it's imp- I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying out of the box, you're probably not gonna have that experience. You can actually order light guns now yeah. that are more universal and they work with uh modern consoles. I've seen some of that. Else, the so. the ones that seem to be the most useful are like uh these ones that you just replace your well not replace but they stand in place of your uh yeah. vr controllers so you end up in vr right. games with guns that makes a lot more sense to me of course they don't have the zapper light flash thing and they don't need it mm-hmm. but regular mm-hmm. tvs are all effed man you can't it doesn't work the way it used to no it doesn't it's it's a shame to, i don't understand why they couldn't either because i mean i i guess i don't know 
I guess the input that doesn't make any sense. If, if light guns were a big thing again, suddenly for for whatever reason, but I, I'm with you. It's probably going to be more in a VR world. I mean, yeah. Why would they? No do one's going to be. No one. Yeah. Why no would they do it? It's yeah. Just, no one. It, this it is past. Ridiculous. This really is past. We'll get more to that in a minute yeah, about yeah. these accessories, but for the most part, I just don't see these things taking off again. Yeah. As yeah. Uh, as accessories. So and plus right, uh, right. motion control. Now you've got all the technology in the world to aim anything at anything. Like just even those stupid yeah. Wiimote. Or not Wiimote, uh, uh, Switch freaking Gen con- or Joy Cons. Yes, those things can aim like crazy. So yeah, why yeah. would you bother with? Because that's what they really gun. have done, right? Because didn't the Wiimote it had uh, it had so that you could uh, you got little attachments. You put your Wiimote. I got one around here somewhere. You yeah. basically take oh, yeah. it's got at least it's a plastic shell. Mm-hmm. I always feel cheated with that. Do you feel cheated with that stuff? Like uh, the plastic shell, this you put your controller in. Well, I it's, it's I like, feel kind of cheated when I get those things. I, yeah, because like you're you're basically plastic. just creating. <laughs> all you're doing is adding a holder, I guess. To it. Yeah, I mean, I would rather pay. So the prop that you know the the bonus side is it's very inexpensive. You can pick up these little you know little steering wheel things to put your Wii's in, Wii motes, and everything, as well as the guns and stuff. And like Nerf, I think had one. I think that's one I have is a Nerf one. Um, and they're super inexpensive because it's plastic. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, I'd rather spend an extra thirty dollars on a dedicated device that yeah, if, just felt. But if you think you know, about it, like there, this stuff on this. P, so here's a PS5 controller. Yeah, yeah. This, this here and this here, the two handles. There's nothing in right. those. They're just empty. Yeah. So if you start really thinking about it, there's a lot of wasted space even in the controller yeah. itself. Aren't, aren't, it, aren't the handles? Aren't they? Don't they have the little? Don't they have the little spinner uh, vibration thing? It's definitely got all the force feedback stuff in there yeah, the dual yeah. sense force feedback but i don't think those i don't know what the x-ray is on this i'd have to see a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a an un, or a tear down to, to actually see what's in here there's probably some yeah. circuit board and wire crap but uh, i think most of it's up here in the in the body of in the, the, thing. Bo- in the booty in the booty stick it in, yeah, the, booty. in the booty yeah but yeah are you like that too like i would rather have a dedicated quality device over top because every time i've ever put one of those little plastic things in there i just feel like such a i don't know i <laughs> feel I feel like a full experience. It's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. Okay, yeah. good. It's not just me. Okay, that's not just you. I don't like doing it. Yeah, anything. yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Well, let's talk about the peripherals we do like. Uh, maybe, maybe these are ones we like. I don't know if we do. Well, or before not. you do that, yeah. before you do that, I, I posted the the PCEM Play Retro oh, uh, yeah. zip zip file in the Discord server again. If you haven't downloaded that, it's only like five hundred megabytes or something. It's got Windows ninety eight second edition and it's got a couple of games already installed on it. It's got the Proto Web. Uh, set up so all you got to do is just download that launch the file it's a windows file though sorry uh and and you're right in there windows 98 nice sorry go ahead now fine yeah. all right move on finally let's get back to the 90s and live our windows dreams all right everybody? right well i'm just doing that because i know that we'll probably be doing some you know dos and pc games in the mm-hmm. near future i thought it might be a nice little way for us to it's gonna help it. yeah it's definitely yeah. gonna help all right everybody sit back <laughs> Shall we play a game? Sure thing. We're going to play a game. Not really. We're going to play some games, and they require the use. Well, they don't always require it, but they are better if you use the accessories they were designed for. And uh, Nintendo is no stranger to this idea. They have been making these for a really long time, and they still do it today. That Yabo or Zabo, what was it called? The the cardboard uh, yeah. shit you did? Um, that yeah, was yeah, a yeah. thing. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Yabo? Slabo. Car- I'm just looking up Nintendo cardboard. Labo is Labo, Labo like a lab, so that's like a lab facility, right? Yep. So, they got that. Another yep. modern thing would be that workout ring. Another one would be uh, oh yeah the, yeah the Wii Fit. Remember Wii Fit is it? The Wii Fit, man. You can find um, those things all the time. Whenever I go to the little stores and stuff, there's always a Wii Fit. Yep. And they weren't the only yep. ones, you know. Obviously, Sega and everybody else had stuff, but like today, you can get some pretty crazy stuff. Nintendo's uh, Mario Kart real life remote control. Mario That's Kart cool. The thing. one that rides and drives around the house and yeah. it's got a little camera on it. So you feel like you're actually uh in that. I I just seems that would seem that I really want one of those. Yeah. Like yeah. really hard. But I just work, know though. it's gonna be absolutely <laughs> impractical. Yeah. And it's gonna be shit because there's yeah. just there's just no way. There's just not enough room in my house to go quickly. And have a good experience. I it's don't disagree. I think that's the main problem with it. But I like that they're always willing to put their necks out a little bit. And others do too. Yeah. The the activator for Sega back in the day was this thing that was supposed to sense your <laughs> fighting moves. It didn't really work. 
but it was a thing. Yeah, you could. That do. was like a standing pad, right? Like it had like signals that, like you basically held your arms out and, and yeah. it like impeded. It's it was like, like a, a little, thing, and right? it had like uh, it wasn't even a ring. It was like an octagon, kind of had edge, you know, yeah, hard edges. That's to That's what it. I'm thinking of. Does that like use uh? Like it almost sounds like a, a theremin. Like you know how they played that. You've seen the. You've heard the Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> Don't kill me. Star Trek theremin noise. And I was like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know people. They play. You ever seen anybody play one of those things? Oh hell yeah. Those. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, those yeah. are awesome. They're so cool. Okay, I found Always a picture of that technology. Found a picture of the activator. You can just see it here, chat. But this is like a. How many sides is that? One, two, three, four, I five, six, seven, eight. Impressions of the theremin. <laughs> <laughs> Still oh, it killing is, me. It is literally an octagon, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. It anyway, makes sense. it is. There's a box. This was a big thing for a bit. It was late in the the Genesis life cycle, but it's what I don't know. They, it's what Sega had to do. Fighting? And you could play Street Fighter Two on it. Yeah, fighting Which, games. That's that's we'll find out today. The most successful uh, devices, peripherals are the ones that make use of the library already currently accessible, right? So you want you it's it's tough it's tough to make an accessory and then make games that are dedicated to it unless you also have like a little bonus and go, but you also can control other games with this. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's kind of what you want, right? In fact, in that Zapper commercial I played at the top of the show, even though that was an audio cue, if you watch the video version of that, it's a guy with a power glove and he is playing stuff that's power glove specific but then right. he goes on to play a racing game he's going with his wrist like this like he's spinning yeah, dude. but the worst was him playing super mario brothers it just looked completely stupid right for him to i want to talk about that. the power glove but I've got, i got some complaints about the power glove i've oh, power just, just, got from problems. The design it's got yeah, problems it should have every one of these. i should have kept mine i'm pissed that i got rid of it because i would just like it as a relic right. but it was not a very playable thing no none um, of these are none of these Except are the zapper the zapper is actually we're talking useful. actually the first peripheral we're talking about is actually probably the most functional and still still actually enjoyable. Yeah. You could still you could still enjoy a zapper. Yeah. And I think, you know, without the zapper, does anyone even know what duck hunt is? Is that even a, a thing in gamers' yeah. minds? Uh Duck Hunt was specifically designed to work with it. So was things like Hogan's Alley and there were there were other big titles. But I think Duck Hunt out of out of all the shooter games available, and there was some third party stuff too. I think Duck Hunt is the king. It's the winner. Duck Duck Hunt is the Duck Hunt is is uh, fun because of the zapper. It is a legend because of the dog and his snickering and the fun that that game is having ducks just fly up. So if you ever played Dunk Hunt, Duck Hunt Dunk Foot, okay, all right, <laughs> Dunk Foot Duck. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't Where'd know. Where'd that come from? I like it. Get, get back in my face, tongue. Yeah. Uh, so if you've ever played Duck Hunt, uh, you know, simple, simple game. Uh, you you have some bushes along the bottom. You got a dog. What kind of dog is he? He's, he's a, a hunt dog. Uh, hunt, he's a hunt hound, dog. hound dog type. Deal. He's a hound dog. And so then you got ducks that come flying up. Mostly mallards, right? I think if I remember correctly. And so you just got to be quick on the draw. You got to pull the trigger and zap them. And then, yeah. yeah if, you like missed, that. if you missed, the dog would laugh. If you hit him, oh, you got him both. The lap. He would come up because he was like, yeah. Oh, that sound. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> anyway, it's Nintendo as hell because it's like raw, fun gameplay. Super simple, easy to get into, not hard to understand. Mm. Uh, addictive. You want to beat the score. You want to... Colorful. Yeah. It's just well, well, just one of the best well-designed. This was a first party peripheral for mm -hmm. Nintendo to help bridge uh the gap that was a failing uh console market in the u.s in trying to convince people to buy consoles right at a time when they weren't doing it. right they were right. they were killing it in japan right this became this Famicom. was a system seller here like you would buy the bundle that came with the zapper it was pretty mm -hmm. relatively cheap i don't think it was super expensive maybe 149 bucks right you got the whole thing a zapper this game and I think even Mario, first Mario came with it as well. And that sold consoles. It sold me. So this is why it's an important one for me. My first NES was this bundle. With, okay, so you with, had the action set. There was a couple of sets that came out early on. Yep. There was one that was just the zapper. Once again, Nintendo trying to get in here and kind of break into somewhat of a, like an entertainment system as well as toys. So they were trying to pretend like they were anything but a video game system. Um, and so you'd either get like me and you, 
I, I probably saw the action set, which is the one that came with the zapper and came with the combo cart of Mario uh, and Duck Hunt um, all in one cart. Uh, and then if you were if you were lucky or fortunate enough, you could have got the deluxe set uh, mm-hmm. with with Rob and the gray zapper uh, and, and all that stuff. That yeah. was a little more expensive. Yeah. yeah, it was a little more. You're going to pay through the butt for that. Oh, yeah. You're going to play through the butt for that, Rob. Yeah. Going to rob you. Yeah, Rob will rob you. Turns out now, Rob, yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have. Um, so real quick on the technology front, the zapper worked in a really funky way. Like it seemed like magic, but yeah. what was happening is, and you could see it in the video. In fact, I'll play it again and we can watch it. Uh, when you shot, it would flash, and also you would see a square around where you shot. Whether it was the right. bird or you missed, there was like a white square, and the the way it worked was the can the, the sorry the uh, the trigger would would do this thing where the screen would change, mm. and the light that came out of the gun would then hit the screen during that moment, and then the game would determine okay that was X this far up and Y this far down or whatever it would it'd figure out the coordinates of the thing, and do this all in relatively quick time, and it would respond by either killing the duck or missing. And right. when you're a kid, though, you're like, this is a magic thing. This is magic. It is magic. Uh, it actually worked the opposite of the way light guns had worked prior to this. Mm. Um, the, the, the If you've ever seen a CRT, it draws each line. And so whenever you squeeze that trigger, it it flashes and it it then it is able to locate. There's a photo sensor in the gun itself. In the gun. It's detecting right. the light, right, right. Um, coming from the TV. And so when it detects that, it knows exactly where on the screen that, that you, uh, when you pulled the trigger, the, what was being rendered on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's, it's magic. And it's important to note that they, uh, they, 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 they made sure that you couldn't cheat it because a lot of light guns until this point, you could just point it at a light and just squeeze the trigger and you're like, nailed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Did it. Yeah. But, uh, they, they figured out a way to make it so that you couldn't just sit there and, you know, game the game. Uh, so yeah, fun, fun. And that was, uh, Yokio, I believe was the, was the one who, uh, I think is it Yoki, 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 I think it's Yokoi. Yokoi. I can't remember. Anyway, I, I, I watched some documentaries on that part of it and he had a philosophy, which was pretty typical of Nintendo in general, uh, lateral thinking of withered technology, yeah. is kind of the philosophy, which is like, take something that's already existing mm-hmm. at this mature and is kind of, you know, withering a little bit. And hey, and then make something new with it because you can get it cheap, right? Because those components become cheap. Yeah, they become very inexpensive. Now, what's funny is here in America, we had what you guys are all thinking of as a light gun, right? The orange and right. the, or sometimes they had the gray one or whatever. In Japan, the shit looked like this, dude. Like a real yeah. gun. Like a real, a real uh, Yosemite gun, right? What were they thinking? <laughs> like, I guess guns weren't a problem in Japan the way they could be here. And oh, so they absolutely not. Yeah. yeah, we we definitely have a we had a gun problem here as we've continued to do, because, you know, when you say everybody can have a gun, everybody gets a gun. Yeah. And uh, so there was a real problem during the 80s with I don't know how much of a problem it was. There was a real PR problem for sure. Oh, yeah. That uh, kids with toy guns mm-hmm. uh, were getting, uh, you know, getting killed because they were engaging with the police or whatever, and you know, getting getting shot, uh, or maybe other people. I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't there. Bob Dole was there. He was. He was Bob very Dole knew. Bob Dole says right. I know about it. Bob Dole th- says. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and so they decided that they needed to make toy guns look less like real guns in the U.S. And Japan didn't have that problem. They want they want to go authentic. This is all about immersion. So they got the nice revolver looking. Uh, gun for the Famicom, and uh, we got this thing instead, which is cool. I like. I yeah. actually like the Zephyr. The more production uh, friendly one is this one here, which still looks like a real gun. That looks like an actual like Mac, not Mac Ten, but you know, like some kind of uh, you know. If you held this outside and waved it around, people go, "Oh no, 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 that's, no, 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 put that up." They may not see the cord, I guess, or whatever. But um, and of course, yeah. like you see? mentioned here in the states, we put orange tips on everything, so that was yeah, a lot orange of work. tips. And Nintendo was like, uh, Nintendo definitely was aware of the cultural difference between you know Japan and America, and they and when they when they got the notification uh, to that the rule was an orange tip you know orange capping or whatever no. uh they went you know what we're just going to make the whole okay whole whole gun orange just yeah. so you went from the gray and darker gray to this gray and orange controller which i actually think looks pretty cool yeah did you ever uh 
I don't know if you ever got later into things like the Genesis had. Oh, Konami made a game I loved. What was that called? Hold on. Um, it, oh, Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2. Those are the games. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think and I was talking about Yes. Konami made a pair of guns, blue and orange, but they looked like oh. real guns. They were just colored blue and orange so that they wouldn't be confused for real guns. <laughs> um, and these had actual, I don't know what the phone jacks are for. Oh, yeah, I remember these. They had, like, yeah. they had built-in firmware or something. I don't know. But I bought these for my Genesis. And my Sega like big CD. giant pieces of candy is what they, it looked like. Yes, and they were awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, they were good. They just felt good. The click was good. Yeah, uh, we played at Lethal Enforcers on a big CRT for days. Yes, loved it. But <laughs> anyway. now, did they have force feedback? Because that became really important later. Now, the zapper was just a uh, you know piece, piece of plastic with some weights in it to make it feel hefty. These might have. I'm not sure your... actually if these did. I can't remember yeah. now if they moved. Some the of these things did. Like we, we're still we're still in the uh, first party Nintendo's trying to figure out a marketing ploy uh, to be able to sell systems as toys mm -hmm. instead of game systems. So uh, we haven't gotten to the third party stuff yet. No, there, much, and there would be so. plenty of that to come. But what's funny about yeah. this is that this this supported a ton of Sega CD games. That was its main use case for a long time. But it also worked on PlayStation for about 10 oh, games nice. and then worked on PlayStation 2 somehow. For two games, some Japanese thing I've never heard of, and Police Twenty Four Seven in the EU. Uh, but by then, I think we were kind of done with light guns. When you get when you get down to it, it shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, you just got to worry about the pinouts and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And most of these ports were, yeah. I mean, like the nine pin, like in the Sega Master System yeah. and eight bit computers and stuff. I mean, you could the Atari, you could flip those things half the time, just pull them out of one and stick them in another half the time. So yep, yep. And and again, I I think there's also the uh, I shouldn't say it again because we haven't said it yet, but it's, it's, I think it was a way of recreating some of what arcades would do that you couldn't do at home. Mm -hmm. yeah, and one of yeah. those things was, ooh, Area 51 or oh. you know, all these games with guns on them, the Terminator games, like, why can't we do that at home? Well, guess what? You can. You just got to yeah. buy this stupid looking pistol and you got to shoot ducks. And it'll when be I, fun. When I had, okay, so this would have been around 85. I didn't get an NES until probably closer to like maybe 88 or so. Yeah. I got to get it late in life. Somebody else gave it to me. And so all I had was like a either a 13 inch or maybe even a 15 inch. Is mm. that a thing? I can't remember now. But mm. anyway, the mm. TVs were very small. Uh, so when you play Duck Hunt, you just basically just put the gun almost touching the screen <laughs> yeah you could cheat like that my brother matt would do that he'd get right up on the screen just hold it there yeah and then beep, 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 beep. yeah it was pretty lame once he but actually, what I, choice to have because it's a 13 inch screen you pretty much have yeah. to be within three feet of it you're not you're know. not wrong but once i saw him right. do that it kind of ruined the experience I yeah, think. it did. Hey, you're just cheating. That's that's what a lot of these uh, physical systems had with, you know, it's like it's kind of the honor system. You got to. Yeah, yeah you, you got to. If you you're going to cheat like my Korean yeah. brother, I don't know why I had to tell you he was Korean, but <laughs> he would get right up in that thing and just do it like a half inch away and go, oh, this game is bad. And I'm like, Matt, right. You're cheating. You're cheating. And then he'd leave. He'd be just like, okay, I'm Then he'd be like, I'm out of here. He'd go make ramen in the kitchen. And I would oh, see, why did it have to be, oh, it was a good ramen? He loved, dude, every day that dude made ramen. Yeah. And the house always smelled like that. ramen and kimchi. Love me some ramen. And I could, oh, I could eat it now. Oh, yeah. Right now. Killing me. You're killing me. Play some, so I'm going to get my zapper out and, and dip it in the. Uh... Get your zapper out. Uh, actually, throw your zapper <laughs> away because we're about to look at this weird robot. So they made a robot, guys. Uh, the guy, the game, or sorry, the, the, the device is called Rob, and it stands for, as Brian said earlier, Robotic Operating Buddy. This came yeah, out in 1985. Yep. I, 1985 as well. And I guess the idea is that, yeah, you're playing with your buddy. <laughs> I yeah, guess. Exactly. Yeah. Um, every. Yeah, you wanted to play with your buddy. You don't want to play by yourself. You got the NES. One of the problems with, you know, home consoles is a lot of times just playing by yourself. And that was kind of an issue then mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of arcade games were multiplayer. So, you know, it's like two, two, three players. That's that's what's fun about them. Yeah. And you right? you're the kind of nerd that had no friends. Uh, yeah. Maybe your fr for new friend like could all be this us? robot. Yeah, like all of us. Uh, it was... I I'm going to say this about this device. I think it still looks way cooler than it deserves. Um, it oh, isn't nearly as yes. functional as it looks because you could look at it now and go, oh, I'll bet that moves around and checks your email and, yeah, and yeah. you could tell it to turn the sprinklers on and all this stuff like you would some modern assistant. But it all it just sat there. It wasn't like, yeah, you know. it was it's much more. It's very impressive. He looks a, uh, he looks a lot 
like John Johnny Five, right? From Short Circuit, which didn't come mm -hmm. out until the next year. So it was, you know, all these robots, robots are very popular. We had Transformers going on from probably about what's in the, in the US, probably between 78 to, you know, but once we saw their droids in Star Wars, it was all robots all, all the, the time. time. Yeah, yeah. And we all wanted a robot. And my God, if you want to sell a game system and not call it a game system, make a robot that looks really cool because rob looked like a lot of fun he looked like a real robot if you've seen any industrial sized robots these were kind of how they kind of look sans the head but their yeah. arms and stuff are kind of you know kind of like that robotic big no, the design <laughs> the design works it's a good design like it's a great design aesthetic and uh but he looks very much like wally which is derivative of johnny five yeah. but all these 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 robots look similar um and he's he's just he's really all he is is a plastic uh, with a, a plastic base and uh, a, a center spiral that goes up the middle that you can have him go up and down on. Mm -hmm. Essentially, his his body kind of goes up and down. Yeah, there are really only what two games that really took advantage of it: Gyromite yeah. and Stack Up. Yeah, uh, the and, one and I'm showing <laughs> yeah. Gyromite at the moment on screen here. This is like I never played this because I never had the the robot, but I went right. and looked at some video and uh, boy, what a what a basic ass game this is. Yeah, it's so. just a basic. I mean, if you can imagine something like Mario, but without all the platforming, because all you really can do is kind of walk across beams and uh, you're trying to avoid these. What are they called? Uh, I forget what they call little dudes. Anyway, they're 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 little uh, smicks is what they're called. Smicks. And uh, and and you got to like access areas of the screen that are being blocked. Uh, and the only way to remove those move those walls out of the way to be able to go forward is to have Rob, the robot, control the second controller. So you take the second controller, you put it in Rob's hands, essentially. Yeah. Really, really and he plays with something. you. Right. And he and, he, and you and you uh, use your controller, and you can hit like I watched some videos on this. So you hit the start button, and then you go into command mode, and you can tell Rob to move, turn, grab uh, like a, a gyro. That's why it's called this. Gyro mites. It's a little, little spinny thing, a little spinny top, little mm -hmm. gyro. Mm -hmm. If you spin them, you know those things. Okay, they'll stand up, right? They'll stay standing up. It's sure. like magic. Sure. Yeah. Because you're a kid, and, and everything seems like magic when you're a kid. It all seems like magic. As a matter of fact, Rob the robot's kind of like magic because when you really get down to it, he's physically pushing the buttons. You yeah. could literally have a friend, a real, an organic operating buddy. Yeah, blood, and, a blood bag. Do it for sure. If you had an oob, you could just have, you could just have your buddy, you know, press it, you know. <laughs> I, I don't look I like the again I like Nintendo's brashness at saying let's do something different and drive yeah. sales and I think that's I think it works you know for them some most of the time sometimes it fails miserably but right it doesn't matter it's just like part of what they do they're about gimmicks like nobody should have been surprised by the Wii U or the Wii for that matter or any of the stranger things Nintendo tries mm -hmm. to do where we're just like scratching our heads like why did you think like DS, 3DS? Those are successful consoles, but they're based on a really weird gimmick, right? Uh, two screens, it, 3D marked, screen, right. like all that stuff is so ganko sometimes. Yeah. But that's who they are. They've always been this. This robot and this zapper. This is what this is. Yeah, they you know? have a. This is the Nintendo's philosophy. You haven't, if you haven't been following since the eighties, um, this is what they do. They 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 have great faith in their uh in their games and anything they're developing so they know their library is going to be strong the only problem they have is getting those games into people's hands and rob is a device it was not a success it is it is not it's not a great device it doesn't do much it doesn't add a lot of value to the system but what it does is it gets your attention they're using this this you know there there it gets your attention it gets you to purchase it and then you kind of forget about it and next thing you know you got mario in the system and it doesn't matter that yeah. rob is sitting over there not doing anything because you're in <laughs> you're in the you know you're the in, in the economy now you're in the nintendo economy and you're in can't can't get back out no you're in now so and you can never get out after that i wish i had 3d like the 3ds and stuff yeah total gimmick totally. there's no real value to the 3d but it got us excited. It's like, I got it. Did. It seemed neat at the time. But it's so funny that yeah. the 2D, I always turned the 3D off after a while because it's so right. annoying because uh, you had to stare at exactly the right angle on it. <laughs> but then the 2DS came and sold a crap. You can still buy 2DSs. Yeah. They still make them. Because um, at that point, they had the Wii, you know, 
we'd already had, we had the library. We had this huge library. They, mm-hmm. they got over the hump. The hump is the initial selling, right? It's yeah. like, what do you, what do you offer? Um, and once you, once you had the device, you had that sunk cost thing where it's like, oh, I'm in now. I might as well, you know, I'm, I'm into this, this system. I might as well go ahead and buy some more, but yeah, yeah. Rob, nothing but a gimmick to convince people that this was a toy and not a video game. System. It's also, it's also, you could argue, and I would make this argument that the switch is the same thing. This is Nintendo right. doing the same thing they always do, which is saying, all right, we're going to do something weird. We're normally a company yeah. with a home console and a handheld, and then we keep iterating on the two of those, and they get weird and different, and they keep changing yeah. and whatever. How about the gimmick this time is they're the same device. <laughs> it plugs into my TV, I undock it and take it. Now, I know yeah. it's been a bit since 2017, but it seemed freaking groundbreaking at the time. It was like, what the are they doing over there? Could, yeah, the fact that you could dock your portable gaming system yeah. was genius. They kind of, they, the half step was the Wii U, yeah. which allowed you to play games, you know, relatively close to in your house where you could put the unit to a TV, but then you had your little handheld unit you could walk around the house and do stuff with. That was yeah. the half measure. Yeah. And uh, they just rolled right and into the a, switch. And not and, a great measure either. The Wii U. No, a, no, not one of their better. It's a crappy, but, crappy deal for sales. They sold ter- horrible the games that. Yeah. There was a bad time for Nintendo. Yeah. Um, but they've learned but Rob, their lessons. But Rob looks good on the shelf. Let me tell you, Rob is a is a handsome looking, uh, retro future past. <laughs> can can <laughs> we a, get those for? Uh, can we buy those these days? Let's see. Oh yeah, you can buy one. They're not too bad if you just get the base unit. If you're just really looking just to put it on display, yeah. you can even get a non-working one, sixty bucks or so. Uh, totally worth it for you know for shelf for, for shelf decoration. Um, and Rob showed up in other places too. He showed up in other video games as well, just as you know, a little nod to Rob. Nod nod. To Rob. Yeah, nod Rob to Rob. Rob. Yeah, yeah, it looks right, like right. working ones are running around one hundred and forty nine. Yeah, not too bad. Um, you can not too bad until you realize. You're not really going to play with it, <laughs> right? I mean, you may you may play it one time. I don't think that many people have nostalgia for it, but if you did, you'd probably just play it. Once no, or twice. I just want a busted one I can put on a yeah. shelf and look at. Put on a shelf. That's yeah. what I want. I'll, for all these, I want a glove. I don't care if it works. I just want it. your glove. Same thing. Zapper functional. Functional. You can you can sure. bring some people over and play some duck hunt. You yeah, can still do that. You could still do that, but even then, that'd yeah. be fun to mount somewhere. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the next one then. This is uh, one that I owned. I wish I would have kept it. I don't know why I didn't. I'm irritated to this day because they're kind of expensive now. And that would be the Mattel Power Glove. Yes. A lot of people forget. If we're not making Barbie movies, maybe we should make a Power Glove. And people forget. They think this is a straight Nintendo product. It's not. Mm -hmm. This is a third-party product, although it does appear that Nintendo and Mattel worked very closely together on this thing. Yeah. Um, Mattel... Mattel was quite from the from the stuff I saw. Mattel was quite insistent that mm. Nintendo do this. Yeah, they seem to be. Um, so this is a wearable <laughs> controller. Uh, it was v- inspired by the VPL Research Data Glove, like early yeah. VR tech stuff. And uh, if you had it, well, you you wore it on your wrist. You, yeah, you um, wore it. It was a. It went on. This is the question I had. So I never had one of these. Uh, and you wore it on your right hand, right? Yeah. That seems backwards to me. There was no lefty version of it that I know of. Um, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or if I, it worked with lefties, too. I don't remember how it worked. If it changed sides, I don't. I don't know. But I don't. That think just it seems did. counterintuitive to me because it seems like most of the. So my left hand, I can do some pretty rudimentary grabbing. You know, some you know not not terribly fine motor skills. None of these games are going to be that fine. It's like, like Powerball glove. You just kind of you just grabbing and tossing stuff. But with my with when I'm pressing the little controller, this on the wrist pad. I would have trouble doing that with my left hand, but mm-hmm. if I was doing that yeah. with my right hand, it'd be much better. Is that, am yeah. I backwards on that? I, that I'm you? trying to think, I swear it was on my right. Yeah, it was definitely on your right. They, they, they definitely only made the right hand a power glove. It just seems like it wouldn't be smart. That's an odd thing. Well, it's part of the problem with the device in, in, in full. When you have something right. that's one arm only, you're, you're already running into trouble with like, well, I prefer my left or I'm left-handed or... Right. Uh, my arm hurts. I wish I could switch it over and use my left for a while because I've been playing too long or whatever. You really couldn't do that. This game we're watching right now is uh, Super Glove Ball. <laughs> and uh, Glove Ball, it's basically a pseudo 3D breakout kind of. Yeah, breakout. Yeah. Um, like me. I had this game. It was all right. It, yeah. it got the job done. There was some fun to be had here. I didn't mind it. 
Um, did you feel like uh, did you feel like um, Tom Cruise and Minority Report kind of like? I mean, I always managing feel like stuff. Him. I always feel like him. I'm always running. Yeah, you know, right, doing my own stunts, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> no, no, your power glove. It was definitely not seeing future murders with my power glove. But um, oh, come on. It's uh, it's a weird device, and I th- I think people's or most people's first experience with it was probably that movie, The Wizard. Um, yeah, yeah, that made I a- do remember it from The Wizard. Yeah, do you remember that? That was a big. That was a big. I whoop. do. I think. I think the. Uh, I think. The, and I think they said in the movie, it's so bad. I think that's. <laughs> yeah, it is bad. Didn't they say that in the movie or something? They did. They said. But I, I'm trying to remember. I remember seeing it, and I thought, "Oh, that's cool." When you, if you can get your man, if you can get your product in a movie yeah. about video games come on i mean everybody's gonna want one yeah, right yeah. nothing else even a, wasn't there like a netflix movie not that long ago that was all about a rich kid who had a uh had the power glove and other kids were, oh i, I don't remember. know i, I would watch it was like that. a christmas some eight bit christmas or something like that i can't remember exactly so it's a huge amount of nostalgia <laughs> around this around this bad boy yeah but uh it's i don't remember dumb. if they said in the wizard if they said it's so bad, or they said it's so bad, man. <laughs> no, it could have gone either way. <laughs> I always forget uh, who's in that movie too. But there's like Fred Savage, and then uh, uh, what's his name? It sounds like Jack Nicholson when he was young. Can't think of his right, name. Right, right. It's and it's, it's if I always think that Fred Savage is the wizard, but he's nope. just a little hang on. He's brother, the hang, right? He's the hang on. Exactly. Yeah, the hanger owner. He's not the he's not the wizard at all. Although I think he gets the no. girl. I don't remember how that all went down. Man, we got to watch that again. That movie is just one long advertisement for Mario 3, Super Mario Brothers right. 3, which right. launched the same time as the film. But this made a small appearance. Um, I remember thinking it was too cool to pass up, so I got one. <laughs> and I remember it being kind of useless outside of the one game which I played, which was the one we just talked was, about. I was um, curious about that. Did you get to play? Did you ever play any other games? Were you oh, yeah. Curious? I- yeah, I tried to play. Okay, so you have all your standards, right? Like... Right. I think I even tried to play Duck Hunt with it. It didn't work. Oh, but interesting. I played uh, Mario with it. And here's yeah. how you play Mario with it. You use the D-pad and push the buttons. <laughs> it's, 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 it, had pro, it had a whole bunch of buttons, right? Like, like not just, it didn't have like just two buttons like an NES controller. It had like, it had the D-pad and a whole, like a whole set of buttons. Am yeah, I, it that... had a whole bunch of those. In fact, here, yeah. Chad, I'll zoom into this. So you can see up here, you got this A up, A on, B up, B on. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, and uh, five. And Those then you had program programmable, buttons. Right. Yeah, you could program yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So it was like a shift almost. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you could do, there was potential here for like, I don't know, a game where you needed to do a lot well, of I'm just, hacking I'm or pretending, something. I'm pretending right now, okay, I got, my, I got my arm up and I'm pretending I got the power glove on. Yeah. And I'm using my, I, you know, when I hold a controller, you use a whole two hands, right? So that works well. So I'm playing Mario, right? I'm playing Mario and I got the D pad, but I'm having to use I'm having to use my index and middle finger to to rock back and forth. On you the could D-pad. control the the wrist part, the glove part to to re, uh, do jumps and stuff. Okay, so like you could like release you. So this yeah, like, like there's like exactly. uh, some kind of I think they ended up going there's a whole bunch of different ways to make to, to use sensors and i think the early versions of this used lights or something like yeah. fiber optics but i think the the final release one that was super cheap used some kind of audio uh, th- or no no maybe did use the i can't remember there's a flex sensor it was, it was a flex sensor so it could flex it could it could tell when your hands were flexing. when your hands would flex correct and it was wired yeah. i should mention you always see pictures of this and there's no cable yeah it full-on had a cable you had to be connected but was it? I I looked at some of the stuff. And once again, I didn't have one of these, so I'm going to depend on your memory for this. Yeah. Um. I thought it went to like like a, a unit. So there was like there was the glove, and then that plugged into a unit, and then that unit was essentially wireless, and you plugged in uh like a, a receiver. Oh, my the, memory is you went well. Now now you're making me question it, but my memory was you went straight from this thing to your to your NES, and it had a good long cord, right. but it wasn't uh. It wasn't like a, there was no wireless involved as far as I know. Right, right. Okay. That's my memory though. But I, you know, right, right, a right. long ass like time it's, ago. It's, I don't been a, it's been a minute since you've had the power glove on your sweaty, sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Arm. I want it now so bad. I would love one now. I want it to be all yellow and bad. I, like someone find one of these and Did, sell it. Was it was kind of, was it, was it black? I'm trying to remember exactly. Like, was it mostly black? It was mostly and, gray, depending on which side you're right. looking at. The the hand part, right. the palm part was kind of black, dark gray. And right. then the okay. outer side okay. was a light gray. The little control box with the buttons was black. And then you right. had gray buttons on it. I mean, it, it's, it still sort of matched the motif of your Nintendo business. 
What's weird about daughters. it though is it never I was I honestly I didn't know then and barely knew now uh, that Mattel had anything to do with this. Yeah, I knew nothing about the Mattel because the branding had nothing cluster. to do with Mattel. It was all Nintendo yeah. all the time. No. <laughs> um, so that's just weird. But. I watched it why, the, on the on the Power Glove. I watched the gaming historian on YouTube. I mean, he made one, I guess, for this I don't know five, six, seven years ago. And man, he really he started from the very beginning. I mean, he was like, then once in 1981, I'm like, whoa, dude, that's like eight years earlier. And he kind of goes down the whole the whole rabbit hole of VPL or uh, was it Visual Programming Language Company that foreign because. Mm-hmm. One person was trying to create a visual programming language. Another was working with uh, with with the glove and VR and everything else. It's really it's really deep dive. But yeah. man, all I could think the whole time though was that looks really sweaty. How yeah. long can you wear? How long can you wear one of those things before you're like, okay, get this off me? Not long. Um, I right. found a photo of the kid and the wizard wearing it. So chat, that's what that looked like. And it looks like he's wired up as well so i'm pretty sure you have right. to be wired everything now, it was definitely wired. a wire i'm pretty sure there's a wire that ran to um a receiver unit but then i think there was also maybe for i'm not sure i don't, I don't know i didn't have one yeah all you, i'm going by is what i saw you should have you should have been a cool kid and had one of these what were you doing I, <sighs> what were, was one of these things set you back you think what, um, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think uh power glove in 1989 would have set you back oh uh, i don't remember oh my gosh dollars. it was probably I think it was sub a hundred, but I think it was like, sub- I would, yeah, I would, I would think I would pay somewhere between 89 and 120. If I was down at the Kmart, um, look at this <laughs> in Some- 89 monies. Somebody's making an oven mitt. Oh, look at this. I want right. this. There's an oven. Right. Mitt and you know, I glove. do wear the, the power glove, uh, in our inner frog pants wrestling group. If you're not watching, by the oh, way, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot about yeah. Brian's today, all, but- he's a little video game nerd in that, in that world. Yeah. Yeah. John Jagger doing, doing the Lord's work over there. Yeah. So yeah. Good. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, that's the, uh, that's that thing. And it's, you know, that thing's an interesting thing to read about. So I would, I would go do some of that. Um, but again, it's I wonder not, if you, you were know. like, I wonder if there's like any video clips of like, uh, of Pat Sajak, you know, talking to somebody after they spun the wheel a couple of times on, uh, on uh, wheel of fortune, yeah. you know, and they have to do the whole shopping thing right there. We talked about this on smash TV last week, yeah. where they have to do the whole shopping thing while they're there. I wonder if there's a power glove in there. <laughs> I don't know. I'll take the power glove for, for 75 uh wheel of fortune bucks well he's he's retiring so you can ask him now oh oh yeah yeah (laughs) so now i'll finally have access yeah once he yeah now once he retires i'll finally have access to the to the sajax yeah he's he's gonna finally let he's gonna open his 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 uh his i was gonna say his hole he's gonna open his (laughs) um his his records his archives and let everybody know what the hell's going on over there him Vanna and, White, I think, is from Myrtle Beach, which is around my way, and she's she's she was often. Uh, she's still there. I think she I hasn't said. I think she hasn't said whether she's going to continue or not. I think it's about the money, and I don't blame her. She deserves so much. She's like she's been watching these people get the money. She wants to put the money in her pockets. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Look at him playing Nintendo or playing. Mario. You ask me why? Why you tuned into Wheel of Fortune? It ain't Pat Sajak. No, it ain't. It ain't that. You watch for Vanna White turning over the letters, man. You That's know what right. she does now? She doesn't even do anything now. She walks up to the letter. They're all digital now. Yeah, she just touches it. Just Sweet. touches it. It's kind you of. You think she needs to pay paid less now? I think because she's yeah. using less effort. I'm kind of annoyed by it. It kind of bugs me. It's like, what are you actually doing? You're right, right, doing right. It. Like, it's not her fault. I don't blame her. Yeah, yeah. It's just a weird presentation. Man. It's 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 hilarious that we we have to sometimes associate physical labor. To, to value uh, the the salary of someone sometimes. It's funny that we would think that way, but we do. We all we do. do. We it's do. like us. Yeah. Same year, we got Broder Bun's U-Force Power thing, uh, controller deal. Remember this? U-Force Power Field controller? I only remember it in the fact that I watched a video on it about two months ago. Mm. I'd never heard of it. Yeah, it was like a little, it almost looked like a battleship. <laughs> Kind of yeah, that's thing. a good way to think about it. It looks like a like there's there's like a, a base. Like if you were to play Battleship, uh, and you flip up the little the little the little case, yeah. it's like an open case, right? Yeah. And you got your you got your ships on the bottom, and then you got your you know your uh, your the the opponents up top, right? And so it kind of looks like that. And the reason why is because it's got like uh, it's got light sensors, right? It detects infrared that detects your hand proximity to that grid. 
Yeah. Is it's that a, right? It's, yeah, it's just like gesture recognition stuff. Um, it yeah. used all infrared, like you mentioned. I don't I think there were any kids that were like, ooh, Broderbund. <laughs> Bro- Broderbund. My, my favorite you did it brand. Again, Broderbund. <laughs> yeah, good job, Broderbund. <laughs> I don't know why that just seems so stupid. That name. It it does Broderbund. I've always love hated that name, but the U Force Power Fill Controller that is definitely marketing towards the older oh, hell folks. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and, and we talked about Minority Report. That feels a lot more like that because you know you're reaching in that field that's being generated by that infrared field, and you're breaking the you know breaking in there. And, uh, I, yeah, I think that's more of an adultish yeah. kind of toy. I don't think that's something kids want to do. No, I don't think kids are interested in that. And I no. definitely don't think they like the name Broderbund. No. And the problem was it's a really good gimmick, but it is unlike Rob. Rob's not broken. Okay. Nintendo sold Rob. It's a gimmick, but it's not broken. Mm-hmm. So this is broken it's the gimmick and it's broken and it's because broken. it's not responsive <laughs> yeah yeah it doesn't do it doesn't consistently operate like it's supposed to rob would consistently move slow and there's a reason why rob moves slow because that was the way they could control uh quality control and make sure that rob was functional over a long period of time never to disappoint you by being broken maybe disappoint you by well, why would he move faster yeah that's exactly right now we talked yeah. about it or mentioned it last week. Uh, Konami made something called the laser scope, and this is a thing you could buy. <laughs> you could play things like Duck Hunt with it, but all the other shootery games they had their own. You had to yell fire every time you yeah. shot. Uh, there's a kit on the box there, chat. You can see there's the actual device up close. You'd wrap this around your head. It looked kind of futuristic and in a in a kind of airwolf kind of way. Yeah, it looked like a it like you're right. It looks like a, a pilot's helmet you put on. It's, but it's just really headphones. The way it is headphones. And then on the top was a an attachment that you could either put on or keep off. You could wear it like headphones. I don't yeah. know why you would. They're they're crappy headphones from yeah. what I've read. Terrible. Um, and but you can put essentially a uh, you know a a, a blaster, a, a whatever you want to call it, like a whatever you want to call a light gun. You can put light a light gun, gun basically yeah. on your face mm-hmm. is what you're doing. That's all it was. And that's all it was. And it was activated by a microphone when you would say fire. You could say other words too. You could say whatever but, you want. You could go shit, yeah. and it would fire. Right. Shit, shit. Yeah, or your mom um, would go, Bill, and you and it would fire. And your mom quit yelling my name, and then it would fire because right. you said mom. You know, it didn't matter. Yeah, or you could take it off and use the headphones. Anyway, it was uh, it was a terrible idea because, first of all, <laughs> people already, I mean, we already, well, we know it now. I mean, yeah. people don't even like wearing 3D glasses and stuff, but this well, is a whole thing a that goes in your sell. head. Yeah. It's a whole headset, you know, varying sizes in head. I mean, look how long, you know, Oculus spent, you know making headsets comfortable for all heads yeah and konami's just like hey we got some plastic let's send these <laughs> things out you know and it's like you know, the, the head sizes are all wrong if you had a big head the, that would affect how you know it point and it's oh, got it wouldn't point work the for tv because yeah. it's got you know it's got little sensors and stuff inside of it so i never had this one this is one i just yeah, I never had knew one. about but didn't didn't have the other one i knew about and wish i had was the nes advantage this is worth a mention today because it's an interesting yeah. Uh, device that I think is basically the design aesthetic anyway that the 8-bit do guys did for they, they have a they have an arcade stick that looks just like this now yeah um, a little bit of difference but but basically it was meant for like yeah you got the arcade in your hands yeah. look at this and it also worked with uh, you know the NES yeah and it was cool is, yeah this is cool this is actually a peripheral this reason why I, I, I thought this is worth a mention it's a peripheral actually not a gimmick mm-hmm. it's functional it it enhances the experience right so they they got one right nailed it they did they got it right i'll give them credit for this one i don't know that it yeah. sold very well i don't know who it was for because fighting games weren't really a thing yet right um so there's some questions but about they that did systems had a lot of arcade ports mm-hmm. and so that's you know of course you want to do the arcade port with the arcade stick mm-hmm and here, by the way, chat room, I'll show you a picture here. Here's 8-Bit Do's Arcade Stick, and this is basically not that, obviously, because this has got six buttons and a bunch of other tuner stuff and everything, but it's in mm-hmm. that, it's in that, um, it's in the spirit of that thing. Yeah. 
and it works. It's cool. I like it, but do a lot. So if you haven't been to their website yeah, yeah. in a while, you should go check out their new stuff. They have a keyboard. Have you seen this clicky keyboard they're making? Oh, I was reading about the keyboard, Dave, but I have not seen any pictures. You got pictures of it? Yeah, 8-bit. Eight 8-bit, eight well, it's just on their site, but 8-bit do okay. retro mechanical keyboards. This is an actual clicky oh, mechanical yeah, keyboard. That. And uh, I don't know what the... Were those two big easy buttons? Looks like the easy buttons from Staples. Is yeah, what are those for? I don't even know what that is. Uh, big, two big red buttons. I don't know what you do with it, but I'm down. And I want that PC back. I want that IBM as well. I want that IBM and that. I want everything that's on that disc. You want all these tapes? Me. Oh my gosh, look at all this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it say down there? You're you're over top of it. What does that thing say? What does it say it is? Uh, which one? The, uh, the, the little controller thing, the oh, red buttons. Uh, they're programmables. Uh, let's oh. see, do they have a name? I'm trying to see if they have a name. Oh, they have Famicom and NES style of the yeah. keyboard and colors. I'm always um, jealous of Famicom and how it looks with that grays and brown that beige cool brown kind of in the ba- reds. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm a fan We got a VCR too. looking mofo in our, for our... <laughs> yeah, we got screwed. <laughs> see, magnetic adapter compartment, classic power LED. Hold on, let's see. Oh, there is a mouse, two button mouse. Um, is that the big red thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what those buttons are. I guess you... Can you? Can I buy these? Like, I guess you're just programming them, right? So I, yeah, the NES mouse looks like NES. By the way, it's got a little, th- it's got a D-pad on the thumb. It's pretty neat looking, by the way. If you've never fi- seen by it the way, they've my, had that one for a while. My though. favorite new. So if you're looking for a controller for new stuff, I have a recommendation. Yeah, I picked one of these up. I got it wired because I like wired on my PC. It's just fast. And I don't have to deal with any kind of fruity Bluetooth crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I got their version of the Series SX sort of replacement controller. For yeah, P- yeah. For PC, and it is freaking great. I love, love this it. thing. It's a beast. It does all the stuff um, that a stock one would do, but for like less than half the price. Nice. And it's really tight. So if you're looking for a good PC controller, this thing has been awesome. I love it. I like it. Can't say enough about that. I have. But like, say more. Say more, Scott. I have like ten of their controllers. I don't know what my problem yeah, is. Yeah, I do too. I'm I the just, same way. But they could just. We've talked about this before. I I have. Of course, they have more controllers than consoles because usually most consoles have a couple of controllers. I've got a ridiculous amount of con- uh, controllers. Ridiculous. Yeah. Why do you need more? Uh, why do I need more? The answer is I don't. I don't, don't need more. But I want them. I want this. Uh, see, look at these sweet Genesis. They got a they got a white one and a black one. Six button Genesis controllers. Oh, sexy. oh I like that. I, I'm going to tell you though, but the next controller I'm going to pick up, I have that one right now that was just on screen a few seconds ago, it is the M30, is my Mega Drive. Oh, yeah, look at you. 30 yeah. wireless. I have I that one too somewhere. Genesis back there. I don't know yeah. where that is. I really like this one. Uh, it's got, like I said, it's, it's wireless and plugs directly into your regular old uh, Genesis or Mega Drive. Um, 8 bit do. Um, but I, what I really want is the wireless, uh, the wireless Sega controller the wireless mega drive controller for nintendo nintendo makes an official one that you can play um take a genesis games with oh that's right they do yeah i wonder yeah, how I want, those are those. i'm kind of curious about those yeah although yeah. i don't i don't pay for the upgraded monthly to pay to play all the genesis and n64 stuff on there but you know what tempts me to do that is that i can play uh mario golf 64 on there right that's the best mario golf game ever the made mario. it's, it's the so mario. good it's so good, dude. Let me see if they'll let me order it. Sometimes they, sometimes Nintendo is is uh, it only offers you to be able to get certain controllers when you're doing certain things. Oh yeah, it looks like I can. Okay, I can log in to purchase fifty dollars. Just posted in Discord for you, mm-hmm. by the way. Thank you. But it's just the three button Sega Genesis control pad uh, that you can use with your Switch. Nice, sexy. Fifty bucks, man. Oh, and I got I got Wi Fi controllers. These guys are great. Yeah. This is the no one I got. Do. Um for when i play retro games on a yeah, that's on a, good one. A, a pc or something and this is what called the pro 2 it's got the yeah. nintendo button layout and all the extra buttons and switches but they're awesome for real i they're my favorite i know there's there yeah. are a couple of people in our in our not our chat but in our community where every time i bring up 8-bit do they get mad <clears throat> yeah i don't know why i don't know why i don't know who these few people are i've, I've encountered the same people very angry about 8-bit do I don't know. Maybe Why? I am just a casual gamer in comparison to how these people are hardcore gaming. Maybe I don't know, but they do sometimes occasionally complain about you know button problems or something else. Maybe I haven't I had any of those issues, and I play with I've mine no all the time, all the time. I do too. I do too. That's what's, but maybe I've got so many controllers that it's like I, I guess it's like having if you only have one pair of shoes, 
you know, as opposed to the many pairs of shoes I have. Yeah. You're a shoe guy. You're a shoe. Yeah, and I only, man. you know, and, and so I don't ever get creases on the tongues. <laughs> the tongues. Well, uh, on the, what do you call this? No, the, you're the, right. When they get creases. Yeah. They're tongues. I just have always hated that shoes have a tongue. Mm, tongue. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. All right. Well, there's your look at some of the, uh, some of the uh, highlights of the NES era of peripherals. Uh, who knows? One day we may get more into what other uh, people like Sega and others were doing. But oh, dude. Yes. Sega had a, had a, you know, they were trying to. They had a moment. Keep up. They had to keep up. They had a ton of stuff, too. We will definitely have one of those. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, hell, you could look at the stack that is a Sega CD underneath, oh. a Genesis yeah. on top of that, a 32X on top of that. <laughs> like, those guys were nuts. And that doesn't even yeah. count, like, CDX, the Nomad, Game Gear with its freaking TV tuner, like, all that weird shit. Would that, would that work today if, let's say, let's say Xbox, or let's say PlayStation 5, let's, let's say the PS5 okay. was to come out and sit and, and Sony was like, hey, check out this new, uh, you know, uh, giant head you can stick on top of it that allows you to play <laughs> VR games or uh -huh. something. What? You, would you be even interested in something that's stacked? Is, is technology stacking just a never going to happen? Is that just a? Uh, I don't know, but I kind of, I kind of absolutely loved it when it was happening. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I was, yeah. oh, I, I thought that was so stupid and great, and it, and there's I couldn't even fit my damn <laughs> Genesis under the thing. Although I did get the Genesis two and the right. CD two, which meant they were. It, that was a, the CD was like a more compact thing, right? And so it sat next to it, so it was more like a long one long console thing. So right. that was better, but still, you put the 32x on top of that, and then you put some big ass cartridge on top of that. And it was just like, where do I fit this? Where does this go? Hey, think about this for a minute. Okay, here's my here's my Nintendo pitch. They're go. always gimmicking stuff up. Go. Okay, so Nintendo comes out with something. Hmm, let's say about the size of an original NES. Yeah, something like something like suitcase sized, almost like a small suitcase. And they said, you can now you can take your switch without the controllers and you can dock it into this new unit and it's just as powerful as a PS5. Oh, we're man. gonna call it the PlayStation. The, the the no, we're not gonna say PlayStation. Oh, sorry. We're uh, gonna call it uh the 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 the, the zap about. I don't the know. Dirt Weasel 2. I don't know. <laughs> the Dirt Weasel 2. <laughs> Would you be down with that? Like for about a like for for two hundred dollars, you can buy this. And you stick your switch in it, and it's just as fast as the PS5. I mean, what do you think about that? yeah. Would you? Would I? <laughs> would you run to the store? Um, price matters, right? I need to know price that. Price matters. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, what? It's like three ninety nine for a switch. I mean, so you gotta you gotta make the whole combined price something that's similar to a PS five. So yeah, you know. yeah. So if you've already got the switch, you take out that value, and then if, and then if you're yeah. telling me the rest, it kind of equals that when I'm done. I think I'd yeah. probably do it. Yeah, it's just a little case. It's got maybe like it's got like a it's got a, a what, like a forty eighty in it or something. Maybe not, maybe not. So that's something that beef. They like to use obsolete technology to kind of. But yeah, anyway, yeah, be like yeah, a twenty eighty yeah, okay. or something. Right. So you put like you put that you dock that thing in there, and bam, right. you're at the equal of whatever that is. I mean, I think the reason we'll never see that again is because Sega proved it failed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Like I right, they 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 put, they put in the work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is crazy. Did you know 8-Bit Do does mod kits for original Saturn controllers? I did not know that. So they'll give you the circuit board? Oh. Oh, that's wild. So basically, you gut your plastic. Right. And you change all the internals, including you can put like, oh, USB-C sticking out of there and all that. That's hmm. cool. Solderless, it says. How's that possible? Right, right. All right. These guys are cool. When your whole company just does controller shit, I, I'm listening, okay? <laughs> I'm listening. Um, all right, well, let's move on to a little game we like to play each week called Guess Our Game. Destroy it. <laughs> we play a little audio from a game, an old one usually, and uh, we try to guess what it is. Almost always it's old. That's I was about to say it's every time it's yeah. an older one. I mean, yeah, you don't have, you don't have to, like, temper that no. statement. It's, I don't know it why It's absolutely 100% of the time. <laughs> always old old Something old by retro. some measure of, of of age okay right 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 today i'm gonna start with a game from 1997 Ooh. for the playstation one that i think you're gonna not get maybe you will oh, I don't oh know. okay challenge i don't know but you got three questions Accepted. you got three questions right. and that's it and then uh a guess so here goes i'll play it the evil murderer 
With a knife? Now, as you can tell... No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The something uh, something I want to say about this real quick. Let me pause that. Games of that era did not know how to sound mix. Right. Music's they too did, loud. To voices say, are too it's low. All over the place. In fact, this way this one started, guys talking over someone else. It's just like yeah, really yeah. bad. But that is how the game was. I own this game. Here's more. Search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe from Norway to England. Okay, that's the intro. This is mostly what the game sounds like. Okay. Played this, but it sounds real familiar. Like I've watched video of it before. You might have. You might have. Listen to this coming up. She goes down a ladder. Oh, that's a, that's a hint. There's a she in this game. Oh, oh, is it uh, Shira? No, I don't. Uh, oh wow, what's she doing there? It almost sounds dirty. She's climbing I've a ladder. I've seen them a few times already. They are probably the ghosts of the children killed here. So oh many. <laughs> so many. <laughs> All right, that's the that's the entirety of the clip. Any ideas what that okay, is? Okay, okay, okay. So let's let's start let's start uh, wheeling this thing down and see if we can figure it out. Okay. Um, uh, is it a point and click adventure? It is not a point and click okay. adventure. Although I will say, like we do with these questions, it is an adventure. Okay. Okay. Adventure. Okay. Kind of. Am I solving environmental puzzles? Um, mostly yes okay yes you are <laughs> you are definitely doing that you've got to solve all sorts of uh, I'd call them puzzles and mysteries how about that they definitely felt like a mystery so yeah that's what I was trying to figure out um, yeah I don't know what this is I don't think uh, uh, did, what, uh, was this, uh, was this a th third party developer yes Japanese developer yeah. I'll tell you that okay. two people in the I'm sorry, one, two, three, four people in the chat have it. So everybody knows except for me. Everybody okay, gotcha. but Brian. Right, I'll right, say right. I'll say this. It is this will right. help you maybe a little bit. This is this was around the time Resident Evil was big. Okay. And so this was someone else's attempt in that space. Oh, like a Resident Evil type thing. So it uses tank controls kind of thing or kind of. Yeah, I guess it did. Hmm. You know, and I kind of lied before. I didn't lie, but <laughs> Um, it does sort of use. Uh, there are click and point and click uh, uh, aspects, right? Right, but not like your typical two D. No, you know, find a hidden object, find a thing on screen, right. right? Not like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, got you. Got you. More like what you said, like uh, like the Resident Evil kind of. <laughs> the okay. wraith. The wraith in the chat is one hundred percent right. This is not Choplifter. Good job, dude. This, this is not is Choplifter, yeah. so it must be Lifter Chops. Is what it's it is. Lifter I chops, everybody. Lifter chops. Uh, I'm going to go with. Um, you have one more Jack question, the Ripper. Right? Don't you have one more? I think you have one more. Oh, do I? Okay, I think so. Um, that doesn't matter because I don't have any more. I don't have any more ideas. I mean, I, I can see what the game looks like. Yeah. I can. I imagine it's a you know kind of a dark game, um, mysterious. Is it a uh, clue 20? Uh, is it clue 1998? Let me find out if it's clue 1998. Is it clue 1998? No, it is not. This game is Clock Tower or The Clock Tower. Clock Tower. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Clock Tower. Okay. Yep. I got you. Do you remember that game? It was a survival I, I, once again, I, 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 I have watched a video of this. I never played this game. Yeah. But yeah, I recognize the audio. Um, Me and my buddy Andrew I played, played, played it because we were really into Resident Evil and we were like, "Ooh, another horror game! Let's try this." Yeah, and it had, I think that's why I it was scary it. because it would. There was this little scissor guy that would chase you with huge scissors uh, down these hallways, and jam. you would have to go hide and avoid him for parts of the game, and it was legit intense. Like freaked that's us what the I, hell that's, out. That's, that's probably my jam. We probably need to cover this eventually because that's that you're describing things that I love. Yeah. And I love. Do you I like a Do you voice. like a scary game? Do you like a Oh, I love the scary game. What I really love 
is that uh, voiceover work that that woman was working. <laughs> yeah. She, she was like, I think they were trying to literally go, let's, well, how does Resident Evil deliver? Let's yeah. do it like that. Yeah, top, top stuff. This was also a Japanese developer, although I didn't look up the info, but um, it's an odd, it's an odd mix of different things. It's not, it, it never, I mean, some people really like Clock Tower, but I, I don't think it ever reached the levels that Resident Evil, you know, was doing. But it was it was interesting to to be sure. He says it's for the PS One, right? PS One, PlayStation One, yeah. Yeah, it looked like utter ass. Oh yeah, geez, I've seen this. Yeah, I've seen this a bunch of times. Just looks like ass. Look at those people. Actually, I think I've mostly watched stuff from the second one. Oh, Clock Tower. Was there a Clock Tower two? I never played it. Yeah, I think it's PS Two, right? I'm thinking of. Was it PS Two? Tower. No, uh, I think it was on this PlayStation One still. Let's see here. Uh, Struggle Within. It was called, and it came out. You're right, PlayStation 1. <laughs> Second game in the series, although it came out a year earlier than this one did in Japan, and then it would come out a year later. Like 98, I guess. Anyway, Clock Tower, hell of a thing. Clock Tower! Um, all right, Brian, I'm going to do yours now. You lose, so now let's see if I can lose or win. <laughs> you lose, yeah. let's see if I can win. That's right. Tell me about this. What's your? What's my clues? <clears throat> so uh, I decided to go back a little further. I'm going at the arcade in yep. 1984 i never played this game um i why well, never played it at the arcade let's put it that way okay. let's, let's put it that way i've never played the arcade i played it elsewhere okay and i really liked how the arcade version went and i want to go back and play it Kick it's ass. much better let's see what we got here for a sec i thought i was listening to wait that very first bit reminded me of what is that game called? Mooncresta. Oh, yeah, That's you love that Mooncresta, don't I you? I do. Um, first question, is this is this Bubble Bobble? No. Okay. It is not Bubble Bobble. Is it a platformer of some sort? It is a platformer of some sort. Um, Arcade 84 Why is this so familiar to me? Uh, Is this See that right there sounds like Mooncresta Is this uh, Getting kind of Burger Time vibes is it burger? Yeah, kind of feels it... like that. Oh man, I can't believe you didn't get it. Is it burger time? Is it burger time? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not burger time. Damn it! Was that my three? <laughs> that was my three. Shit. That was your three. But you, you go more. Yes, yes, yes. No, I. Got, that's all I got. What is this? All right, all right. Nobody in the chat room got it. Wow. I'm I'm shocked. Hey, let me check. I picked Who... a good one. Oh, people said someone else said burger time. Matuba. Yeah, burger time. They guessed balloon fight. Nope, no. Nope. Beer tapper. Uh, could be burger time. Too. A couple people guessed burger time. Sounds very similar to it. Beer tapper. It is of all of that uh, similar era. But no, every, this every is a era. little game called Bomb Jack. Bomb Jack. Never heard of Bomb Jack. Bomb Jack. Now, I played this on, I believe, the Commodore 64, but the arcade version was hot. I loved it. I, I went back and saw that. Uh, uh, Tekon is the uh, is the is the video arcade people who published it. Look at that. I've never heard of this. I'm looking at some mm. video now. I figured you probably have heard of the, what is it, Super? Is it Super? My, Mighty Bomb Jack. You might have heard of that one. No, I've never heard of That's that That's how neither. I got there because I was, I was going through Tecmo's Mighty Bomb Jack uh, for the NES, and I kind of worked my way back through the series, and the arcade version, the original arcade version, it's pretty hot. Okay. I kind of like it. I like the, uh, the 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 Egyptian stuff in the background. That's Sphinx, cool. yes, yes. Yeah, that's cool. Hold on, let's but see. It's kind of got like a, almost a kind of a joust kind of vibe a little bit, some, you know, and it's got, it's very platformy. What is your guy? Yeah, how about, like the, a how little... about look at look up the NES Tecmo Mighty Bomb Jack and see if that looks familiar? Is he a little superhero guy? Is that his? He's deal? kind of like a little superhero guy, like uh, uh, deals in the bombs, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, deals <laughs> like, with the bombs, like they do. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super. What's this other one? Sorry, Super Bomb Jack. Yeah, yeah. Super. Uh, oh, Mighty Bomb Jack. Oh, Mighty Bomb Jack. This, but this is a Tecmo uh, thing. This is, I think, this is why I, I played. I didn't realize those were related, actually. I did play this uh, NES version, uh, the Mighty Bomb Jack, but I'd also played on the Commodore 64. I played the original Bomb Jack and did not realize 
that it was an arcade game. Well, and I was actually thinking you might get it because I was thinking, I bet you Scott had this in his arcade collection down in the basement. Hell no. I'm looking at the NES version of Mighty. Oh, yeah. that looks like a lot much bigger screens with scrolling mm-hmm. and stuff. Yep, yep. I mean, I might. Do you go down? Do you work your way down? Because uh, I, I like this that. Level you, I like when on, games yeah, on, do on that. On this level you do, I believe, yeah. Okay. I like games where it's not your typical side scroll or work up. I like mm-hmm. working down, man. It's got verticality. Do you ever play? Uh, uh, it's relatively new, but it looks retro as hell. Do you ever play Downwell? Downwell did not dude, play that. Downwell I, is so good, dude. There is a new game, uh, relatively new. There's something called Only Up, and you have to you just keep jumping uh, on platforms that are just like randomly suspended in the air, and you have to keep like making your way up. And if you fall, of course that's bad because you're trying to go only up. That seems bad. And, yeah. You don't want that. Yeah, it seems bad. And uh, recently, I seen one that was a take on that. You might want to check out these verticality games, but there's one called Only Down, and uh, it's the same thing. But you're just going down, and you have to be careful because if you slip off, you start you go into like a ragdoll physics after you fall a certain amount of feet, yeah. and uh, and then that's bad. That's bad. That seems bad. You don't want to do that. Yeah, because then they reset you up high again. Then you have to start back up. Yeah, it seems real bad. Um, I'm kind of check this out. This seems fun. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, it's another, you know, clear the board kind of game, but whatever. That's what we yes. played like back then. That's what it. I like it. It's perfect in my little bedtime. The thing's actually where I played it recently was uh, on my Amber Nick laying in the bed, just going through stuff going, oh, yeah, I remember this one. Oh, yeah. My Amber oh, Nick yeah, has, yeah, a, cool. has a weird tiny piece of plastic rattling around in it. Oh, no. And I don't know what to do. I guess I could open it. Um, right. I don't know if I have the right screwdrivers for it, but um, everything's fine. I haven't, you know, no, yeah, yeah. no major issues as best I can tell, but I shake it. And I just hey, hear a little tinky, little dinky in there. Going, if you're going to tinky, little dinky, if you're opening it up, you might as well go ahead and replace those uh, trigger buttons back there too. And also do the D pad mod um, that everybody recommends. There's oh, right. There is that. So it makes it less mushy or whatever. Yeah. 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 I actually never bothered by it, but maybe I would like it better if I did that. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't bother me either, but yeah. maybe it would be night and day. I don't know. Well, there you go. Uh, we, uh, Brian wins this week. No, I won. No, we, oh, both, we, both, we, won. we both lose. We both won. <laughs> well, we, actually, we both lost. We <laughs> both lost, which better. means we both won. That's how this yeah. works. Now this. Welcome to, to the, the treasure, treasure room. room. <clears throat> We're going to do emails uh, here. These are actually texts today. No emails. These are texts. Oh, okay. And uh, these came to us at 801-471-0462. The first one is uh, Rob from Springfield. Rob, um, what are you doing out there, robot or or uh, buddy? Bro, your robot buddy, Operate, that's right. Operational buddy. Says, this is for Play Retro. Back in the day, I was really into Gran Turismo on the PlayStation and Project Gotham Racing on the original Ooh, yes. Xbox. Uh, are those yes. games, or sorry, are those types games I can play on an Ambernick? Maybe you guys could do a show on Ambernick and get the game, or how to get games for it. Thanks. Uh, probably not going to do a show about how you how to get games for them because that you know yeah. it's the whole legality thing there. But right. uh, Gran Turismo PlayStation One will run on the on the uh, the thirty or the one we're talking about thirty five yeah, XX. Yeah, yeah. Um, Project Gotham Racing Xbox probably not. Right. You're going to need Yeah, something. the Xbox is a little outside of this particular Ambernick. Now, I didn't necessarily say the Ambernick that we have, right. but Ambernick does make several models that will probably do some Xbox simulation. I haven't looked lately. I assume I, Xbox. Guess, man, that, that machine was so hackable, but you don't hear much about the mod scene around the games. Right, right. That's because, you know, it, it becomes less relevant relevant when you start having an ecosystem where microsoft does a f- okay job they haven't always done great but they're pretty good about bringing their games forward yeah right? most of it's in, have some most kind of, of it's backwards compatible now like, yeah and you have some kind of collections and stuff they, they well, usually have most of their library accessible yeah they tried to i think they're they're actually quite yeah. good at it if you compare them to everybody else they're excellent at it yes, nintendo yes. and sony are terrible at it by comparison but Yep. But even Microsoft could do better. But yeah, I, I think you're, you're in great shape on the Ambernick 35XX. I've even played it on there. Gran Turismo is fine on there. Project yeah, Gotham Racing, good. you're it's probably going to need a higher end model to, to do mm-hmm, that. If, mm-hmm. if at all, I don't even know if that thing's been... I don't know what the I don't know what the emulation scene is around OG Xbox. I have no idea. Yeah, I mostly play... The, I have some Xbox stuff. I play it on my PC, but I don't think I've done anything on any handheld. Yeah. Yeah, because Gotham, right? That was a that that game was like a modern ass game. It's a big yeah, game. Yeah, Whereas you know, PlayStation Gran Turismo still look like jittery old PlayStation stuff. 
Uh, here you go. Here's this one. Hi, Play Retro. I love the show. Last year, because of your show, I got a Steam Deck. Now I just got an Amber Nick. I love them both, and it's totally your fault. Uh, yeah. Would love to. <laughs> sorry. Would love if you did an episode about the Crusader No Remorse slash Regret. Cool game with a guy who looked like Boba Fett. I'm wondering if there oh. are other modern games like them. Thanks, J Mac. I've never even heard of Crusader No Remorse No Regret. Don't even I know what I have is. seen it. I did I I don't remember playing this one very much. Oh shit. He looks just he, like Boba Fett. Or not Boba yeah, Fett, yeah, but like yeah. a, a um what, what were the not stormtrooper, clone troopers. Clone troopers, Look yeah. Look at this there you go. business here. Wow. Wow. Look at that. But this isn't a Star Wars game. No, is there is a whole Crusaders series. Um, but it looks very much like that, right? It's not nothing to do with Star Wars, right? Am I wrong? I, don't think I mean, it, it sure looks like it, but I guess not. It really does. Maybe I've never uh Origin Electronic Arts. Uh, you know, uh, they've done some stuff. Um, um I don't think so. No. Um yeah, I don't see Due to economic to downfalls, the nations of planet Earth begin gradually Earth. to organize Earth <laughs> themselves into huge economic <laughs> super it. conglomerates. It looks like some kind of post-apocalyptic deal. I've never heard of this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've seen cr- this Crusader series because I thought the same thing when I first saw it. I was like, oh, this is some Star Wars stuff. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. News to me. News yeah. to me. Maybe we'll have to do this one. This is a really good one. And it fits into my DOS playing that I want to do on my PC email. E-M, so that's your PC EM, your PC EM, PC EM. Here, uh, I'll pull up some video chat. We can look at a little bit of this here. Oh my gosh, look at this. Let's see if I can get some audio. Apparently, this guy has no remorse. That's yeah, a great recommendation. He's got no remorse. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're shooting. What's... Oh, I like this isometric shooter. It reminds me of Fallout or something, the original Fallout one, too. Yeah, definitely very much like the Fallout. But the question, I guess, really, did we really answer the question? What, uh, I wonder if there are any modern games. Oh, that are like, like this? Game. I would say yeah. yes. Um, there is a cyberpunk game on everything right now that I really liked. Oh, I yeah. I don't yeah. remember the um, name of this. Uh, it's modern in many ways compared to this, obviously, but it reminds me of this. What is that called? Chat room, do you remember the name of this thing? Crimson something? Crimson Butthole. Shit. Crimson yes. Butthole. Yes. Crimson okay. shit. It's something Nailed like, it. It's something like that. I can't remember. Crimson something? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's good. <laughs> I'm glad we had this talk. Uh, well, there Trust you go. Trust me, it's good. Oh, I wish I knew the name of it. Someone in the chat is going to know this, and it's going to piss me off that I forgot it. Yeah. Crimson. That's a good question, though. Game. I'll just look at Crimson Game. I think the problem for me is I never really played it. I remember seeing stuff from it, but I didn't really ever play it. So I can't get into, uh, you know, what is is special about the game. Is it is it that isometric kind of view or is it, you know, what's the game loop really like? Oh. I really don't know. I mean, I've always you can always head over. My favorite place to go is uh, for for comparison game comparisons. Giantbomb.com does a great job of doing a good list. Yeah, like this game is like this game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah they, they do a real good job on that. Yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah. PlayStation Plus has it right now too, this one I was thinking of, and I'm just going to try to find it. Um, Damn it. I'm at son of a uh, It's really good though. It's good, and it's what you're looking for, I promise. And it's on Game Pass. <laughs> I just don't remember the name of this. It's probably not Crimson. I just think it's there's a lot of red in the game. Oh, is you're talking about the ascent? The ascent. That's it. <laughs> when you start to say there's a lot of red in, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's the, about ascent. the ascent. The okay. ascent is a beautiful, amazing game. Uh, I think. I see why you thought it was called. Would you say crimson something? It's like crimson deep, or so. I didn't know what to call it. Uh, this, so there you go. Check that out. That game's great. Uh, that's going to yeah, do it for call. those. If you want to leave us a voicemail or a uh, text, you can do it. 801-471-0462. Or you can email us, playretroshow at gmail.com. Hey, Brian, I heard a rumor that next time we meet, we're going to talk about the Oregon Trail. We're going to talk about the Oregon Trail. I should probably put that in the show notes, right? But yeah, we're going to do about the Oregon Trail. By the way, holy smokes, I thought it was just that one game. No. And it really is kind of just that one game. But God, there's so many ports and revisions to that oh, thing. Yeah. And I'm curious if there's anything, you know, 
how much different are they? I never played Oregon Trail for more than five. I never got, let's put it this way. I never got dysentery. Mm. I played the Oregon Trail back in school, just like everybody else did. Yep. It's supposed to be kind of an educational game, but it's much more than that. Um, and so it's very, it's a very immersive game. Mm-hmm. Oh, for yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's very immersive, yeah. especially the, the you know, for its time. And there's not visually, not no, visually, no, no, but not really. But the newest wise. one, the the brand new one that's yeah, you know, based on all this is excellent and yes. has that same depth but with some decent graphics, which is nice. There's right. also lots of spin-offs like Oregon Trail, which is like a Oregon Trail. A we might spoof. cover some of that too. Yeah, 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 we'll talk about some of that stuff. But uh anyway, the Oregon Trail, and the reason it's a big deal is it goes deeper than just being a video game. For a lot of people, it was like mm-hmm. the thing you could play at school and it was supposed to be educational for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. Why? And people were dying of dysentery. That's right. Dysentery equals A plus in class. You know what I mean? A plus. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to be doing that, okay? So come back for that. That's Oregon Trail and all things around it next week here on Play Retro. In the meantime, Play Retro uh, can be found on its own website over at frogpants.com slash play retro. But if you're like, whoa, i really like to support the show, like Thomas Falk, Travis Houseless, and Travis Setier, 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 Seatler, Seatler, Seatler. If you'd like to be like those people, you can do that right now. Patreon.com slash play retro. Get no commercials in your feed. Oh, and I just got told that um, it's this has always been annoying for, for uh, Spotify users because Spotify still doesn't let you paste in a custom feed for oh, really? shows. So if it's your preferred player, it kind of sucks. You have to either use something else or you know use public feeds, and that means you get ads and stuff. No. Just found out that if you... Uh, I synced our, our, um, our Patreon so that you can now get our stuff via there and can only get it because you're a Patreon. Does that make sense? It's some kind That's of weird awesome. deal that, that that Patreon and Spotify are worked it out together and now you can do it. So good news. <laughs> anyway, pre-show content every week, monthly benefits. Check it all out at patreon.com slash play retro today. Yeah, and I'm going to do a video posting sometime this weekend with the two zappers I'm going to see if I can get my uh, Genesis or my Master System Zapper to be to, to work as well as when I get that uh, NES Zapper so you, into That's so. what you should do. I'm in support yeah. of your move to do that. Yeah, that's patrons. So that's those patrons get to see me make a fool of myself. That's right. We love our patrons. That's why we're willing to debase ourselves in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm an idiot. Look, I'm dumb. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. And we'll see you next time right here on Play Retro. Get more at frogpants.com. It's child's play. It's child's play.